love to help people. And um, I was inspired and raised by my uncle, Sonny, who was a master sergeant in the, in the Air Force. And uh, he was my father, if you would, even though he was an uncle. And he taught me of sacrifice. And um, for 12 years now, we've used the Everglades and the, and the decks of our boat to help veterans reconnect with their families and, and find peace and find themselves again. It's, 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 it's been unreal, it's been moving. And not only do we spend time out here, but my entire life, once again, I was a fisherman and I've always been a tournament fisherman. We've, I, I fished at some pretty high levels. And so we're not just fishing, we're teaching the vets how to fish at professional or tournament level fishing. So it's, it's successful and they're able to take these techniques and even after our trips are over, they're able to go to their a lake near them or a canal, and they're, they're, they're able to duplicate some of those techniques and re-experience some of what they experience while they're out here. Why do you think that that is? Um, I mean, I, I think there's so many facets to that. Um, you know, to get into a spiritual sense, I mean, you know, we have a saying, you can clearly see where God put his hand. And uh, I believe the Everglades is one of those places. I, I think God put his hand here and, and mother nature and all of those elements come together and help people, the peacefulness out here, I think we absorb it. I've been coming out here for 40 years of my life uh, adult life and even today it's every time I come out here it never gets old I'm moved every time I come I feel the 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 spirituality the tranquility um, it, it's beautiful people that have never have come out here they've never experienced people that are from the city and they tell you, say, oh, we're going to go to the Everglades. Oh, I don't want to really go to the Everglades. Oh, but I want, I'll go because I want to experience something new. I need to get out of my shell. And they come and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This was the most incredible day I've ever spent. Um, you know, I, I can't begin to tell you of um, how many people that have been introduced to me that um, before we go, they say they don't talk much or um, you're not going to be able to communicate much with them. And we get out here and it's 10 or 12 hours of communication. They're laughing, they're smiling, and you get back and you wonder if the person that was described to you in the beginning of the trip is the person you spent the day with on your trip because it seems like two different people. And that's what the Everglades and, and being out on the water does to you. If I could get the vets to come, and the crazy thing is, you know, fishing, I didn't know how to do it, but I said, I'm gonna take you fishing. And fishing is the bait, because you don't sell coming out here with the vets as a form of therapy. You're selling it as, it's a fishing trip. We're going fishing and it's on that trip is where all the magic happens. It's where, you know, I tend to go very slow and I point out different things for the vets to take in, the trees, different rock structures, um, the different vegetation, the different wildlife, the different birds, uh, the different water flowers. You know, there's wild orchids, it's just endless. There's all different types of sawgrass and the cattails it's it's just truly beautiful and so that's why i chose this place i've been introduced to thousands of vets that are suffering from post-traumatic stress tbi a lot of them have uh, have had thoughts of hurting themselves and this magical place has helped them find themselves again has helped them put uh some of those scars, the, the scars of war, if you would, 
behind them or help them file them away, even if it's for that day or that week. But it's that's not how it, it, it happens. I, I can't even begin to tell you of, of the stories of vets coming out that they couldn't transition. They, they couldn't acclimate to back into society. Um, they, they couldn't, they weren't doing well at their, with their jobs. They weren't doing well with their families. They weren't doing well with their spouses. Um, none of their relationships were working and, and we introduced them to this magical place, to fishing, to all the magic that the Everglades share. And I've watched them heal. Being out in the Everglades is awesome. I mean, it's, you just relax you. I mean, you're just out there, out in nature, you know, just around, see all the different species that's out here. Also being with other veterans, which is cool. You know, something you need after being out the service. Understand we got family, but being around other vets who know exactly, you know, what you've been through, what you're going through. It's, um, it's, it's really a big help you know, for us veterans. I've actually seen over the years where as we head out, you can start to see a lot of the weight peel off. I meet these vets and they come and their expressions are very heavy. Their, their mood is very heavy. And then as you come out here, and I've not only seen this with veterans, but I've also seen it with their families. Because what do you say to a veteran when they first come home? What do you say? How was it? That's not a great thing to ask. What did you do? You don't want to ask that. Mm -hmm. So what does a family member say? What does a spouse say? Out of all the years, uh, how long have we been doing this mission? I've been involved with Fishing with America's Finest now for uh, 12 years, 12 amazing years. And um, I got to tell you, when, when I started this, um, once again, I had no idea of the impact it would have on the vets, and I definitely had no idea of the impact it would have on me. To be able to do this is, has been such a gift, to share my experiences of the Everglades, my knowledge, the techniques that I've learned in fishing, and to use the things that I've always loved from the time I was a child to now and be able to share them with with you with the veterans um that means so much to me and uh in a country that means so much to me it truly has been an honor okay. so can you tell me at all the years that you've been doing this uh, can you tell me um one of those powerful stories well there's so many narca but some that always uh that really I can remember that really touched me is uh, I had a veteran call me and um, he told me that um, he wasn't doing so well physically and he wasn't sure how long he was, you know, going to be okay. And on his bucket list, he wanted to catch a big bass. And um, he asked me if I could help him do that. And I reply, well, it's fishing. I can take you out fishing, but I don't know if we can always catch a big, big bass, you know? And he says, well, before you promise me anything, I probably should tell you one more thing. I said, what's that? He said, well, I'm blind. And I told him, well, do you have a pencil? And he said to me, sir, maybe you didn't hear me. I'm blind. I said, well, can you scratch, sir? He said, scratch? I said, yeah, can you take a pencil and go back and forth on a paper and scratch? He said, yeah, I probably could do that. I said, well, we're gonna knock that big bass off your bucket list. And we headed out and, you know, I'm a very spiritual guy, been a very spiritual place. And so I believe that day I had a little help from God. And I tell him, well, I'm gonna have to obviously cast for you, but you can reel. And I don't think it was the third or fourth cast. I cast out, I hand him the rod and he starts to reel and the water explodes, you would think that somebody dropped the center block out of an airplane. It was such a loud splash. And he says, oh my gosh, what is that? I said, that's your bucket list. Start cranking. He says, what is it? I said, it's a giant bass. And he starts, 
oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And he starts, I tell him, real, real. And he starts reeling. And he, oh my goodness. And as it gets closer, I had to you be his eyes. And I tell him, he says, is it getting close to the net? I said, no, it's, it's close though. What's it look? I said, it's gigantic. Keep reeling, keep reeling. And he kept reeling and reeling. And I said, it's almost to the net. And then it's a big splash. What happened? I said, it just jumped. He says, oh my gosh, is it big? I said, it's gigantic. It's definitely going to be the one to knock off that bucket list. And finally, with one last crank of the reel, she gets to the net and I net her. And I hand off the fish to him and he runs his hands across it. And he says, wow, I will be scratching that big bass off my bucket list. That's an amazing story. I love it. I can pick one spot that they all use so much gold. They all, it's so wild. I seen that part of the charm because it's real. It's very real. For the female veterans, mm -hmm. um, a lot of female veterans, uh, especially with children, yeah, they're they're pulled away from their from their children. Uh, they're deployed, mm -hmm. and uh, they leave. A lot of times, their children are very little, and they come back. And I've seen many times where the children are 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 angry. Mom, why did you leave me? They don't understand. And they don't know how to connect with their children again. And this platform has helped so many female veterans reconnect with their children um, through fishing. They come out, they're on the boat, they start talking, they start interacting, they start catching fish. They have to become close. Uh, a lot of times I often I have my cell phone and I tell them this is not a professional camera. This is a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get very close. And uh, and so. They're able to connect. And. Um, Fish went to America's finest is is has been amazing. Uh, uh, for help, for allowing the, the families to connect. Uh, the female veterans with their children, uh, with their spouses, with their families, and with their emotions. This, this program, uh, I've seen it work for everybody. The male veteran, the female veteran, the, the veteran's families. Like you were saying earlier, when a vet, when, when we send our loved ones off and they come back, and it's not, they're not the same person that left. It's very painful for the families. Um, I've often had vets tell me, you know, uh, they come back and, and uh, during our fishing trip, we start talking and they say, you know, uh, they're figured along. And uh, I said, well, you know, that's none of my business, but that's got to be tough. You know, you've been away for four years and you come back and, and, uh, you're not talking and communicating. And they said, well, they don't agree with me. They don't agree with me. And I tell them, well, that's no reason to stop talking. If I stopped talking to everybody that didn't agree with me, I wouldn't have anyone to talk to either. And uh, it's amazing how many times I've been in my car uh, and the phone go to Bluetooth and it's the vet. And he says, hey, Neil, uh, this Friday, I'm, I'm meeting with my family. Or she says, hey, Neil, I thought about what you said. And uh, our family's getting together and we're going to talk. And um, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience. Um, one that's moved my life. 
you know, I often wonder who really benefits from these trips. Um, it's been life changing for me. So Captain Neil, can you tell me how these um, program impact or female veterans? I think that the program has a tremendous impact on the female veteran, as well as uh, the families of the female veterans. But honestly, I think it would be best, uh, rather than hear my take on it, I would love to have you uh, introduce Angel. Angel, if you could, she represents the United States Air Force. Angel, come on in, please. Welcome. Angel Thank you. Hello. was uh, a vet that, uh, one of my very first females. If you could, Angel, tell us your story. How, how did the program affect you? So there weren't too many programs at all to speak of. So I was delighted to hear the Fishing with America's Finest had, uh, you know, accepted females along with the, the male veterans. And um, if you, I don't know if you recall, I think I was on one of your I don't, how, how long had you been in business or, or up and running when I went out with you? A year, maybe? Do you recall? Um, possibly. I, Probably I, about a year. I recall you saying, I haven't seen too many female veterans. Can you help me get the word out? And I said, I'll do my best. But I do recall very distinctly showing up here at Holiday Park uh, to meet and greet the rest of the veterans and you and go out. And no one else had shown up. And so it was a bit of a standoff, like, wait a minute, I'm not going to go out alone in a boat with someone I don't know, have never met. And, and it was progress from that moment on, because you told me a, a few things, um, one of which was, this is a legitimate operation. I plan to be here for a long time to come. I plan to help not just the male veterans, but the female veterans, and you come back if you, no problem. I was going to come out anyway, but uh, whether you want to go or not, uh, it's I'll take your time, think about it. I'll be right over here setting up the boat, and it was just uh, a degree of comfort and reassurance I hadn't really found out in the world to that date. And um, what a wonderful time! In fact, I was still reticent when we got out on the water. I didn't want to fish, which of course your program is about fishing and establishing, you know, trust in the skills that we build and um, just watching you in your habitat. And um, first of all, you let, you let me not talk for a few minutes there. You know, you let me just kind of get one with nature and then it's just Take such it a reassuring and comforting feeling and um, connecting with nature and then you just let me open up on my timing in my comfort level and I thought that was absolutely brilliant and I think I had queried uh, do you have any counseling do you have any social work or what is your background and you told me what you do for a living and it just cracked me up because it's so unconventional you're unconventional you are one of a kind Captain Neal. Thank you. And um, so grateful that I did come out that day. That Me I too. did make the choice to go out alone with you, and you were completely professional. So, Nurka and Captain Neal, and fellow vets and friends and family, you have to know something. I actually journaled after our first visit. This is my second outing with Fishing with America's Finest. And I read that journal last night and what I had very distinctly noticed um, is that I commuted down here to the park our first time out and um, I came in listening to some real, you know, 
headbanging rock music. And when I left at the end of the day, after being out here in the open air and in the, the vast land of the Everglades, um, I went home listening to different music and I had noticed it. And when I got home, even my taste buds for my, my cravings for different foods started opening up to different things. And I guess I just started maturing and more importantly, healing, healing the heart and the mind and that connection. It was like the Everglades and the outing here with fishing with America's finest kind of sparked it. And it just kept going from there. And I kept in touch with you and we talked and, um, I don't know if in a past life you were, a, a, you're obviously quite obviously in this life, a, a healer of sorts, and you are in the right, absolute right spot dealing with people that definitely benefit. I know I did. And it, it started with just one outing to the Everglades with you with fishing with America's finest. As a female veteran, how did it affect you? It was profound. Um, I kind of, well, it was so profound that I actually had to write about it. Um, wrote a novel. And it just stayed on my mind because I love the quiet. That was the first time it was quiet. So it gave me peace for a little bit. And I miss it. It, it. it gives me peace every time I come out here. Mm -hmm. It never, it never gets old. It's, it's what's so amazing about being out here. I can't even, I don't even know the number of the trips that I've made in my lifetime to the Everglades. And each and every time, it moves me. Yeah. It's, you know, there's so many things in life that we do, uh, things that we love, whether it's an ice cream or a restaurant. And after a while, you're like, you know, I want to try something else. But that's not the Everglades. No, and, you know, I live in Florida for a long time, on and off during my military service. And I, I was at the Everglades before, but that was the first time I saw the magic of it. And that was thanks to you, um, to your fishing trip and the absolute impact that it had. So I thank you for that. Do you feel the magic out here today? Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys. And thank you for what you do and done. Nice to meet you. Thank you.